have a heart alibi. Phone's fun. Give me a rest. Bob Dole starts walking, Elmer. A few more rehearsals and we'll be able to ditch these two wandering trouble hunters and get ourselves a job on the stage. Ain't you an optimist, though? Elmer sure got your number, alibi. We're getting plenty fed up with that jabbering. Why don't you put that dummy away? Who's a dummy, you big ape? Get down off of that horse and I'll tear you apart, if I can catch you. <laughs> I'll take it easy, Elmer. You know, the Dusty and Crash are plumb hard to get along with. If we get that vaudeville contract, we're gonna have to put up with them. You darn tootin' you're gonna have to put up with us. And if we have any more trouble with it, we're gonna use Elmer for firewood. Yeah, you and who else? Trouble, that's all you and Crash think about. Did we find enough trouble back on the ranch without going out and hunting for us? One. Looks like that Aubrey in the wagon needs some help. Let's go. I've cut out the foolishness alibi. This is no time to clown. But I didn't do nothing. For the love of Mike. Hey, Dusty, look. It's a real baby. A what? Doggone, I knew there was trouble coming. Oh, kids ain't no trouble. Well, you don't know kids. My baby. He was in danger. So I... No, take it easy, pal. Take care of him. Bart H. Marion. Look out for him. Poor little Maverick.
There's nothing to identify him. Well, what will we do with the baby? Take care of it until we find out what's in back of this killing. He said the kid's in danger and to look out for Amos. Say, uh, you suppose that's the young one's name? No, nope. I'm betting Amos is someone else. Well, what about this Marion in the Bar H Ranch? You reckon we ought to look him up? Yeah, but first we got to go into town and report this shooting. But what if they think we did the killing and throw us in jail? After all, we're strangers here. I never thought about that. After all, there's no reason for us to lead with our chins. Yeah, I guess you're right. So if we turn the horses loose, they'd head for home. Right. And we'll take this two-legged Yerdon to that cabin we just passed until we're sure who it is. That's right. Give me a hand. Whoever killed my brother apparently turned the horses loose and knew that they would bring him home. Have you any suspicions who might have committed the crime, Miss Horner? No. We've had a great deal of trouble ever since the state started buying gravel from our ranch for Medicine Hat Dam. A couple of our men were mysteriously killed, as you know. And Bob's life was threatened several times. That's why he was taking the baby to town. He thought it would be safer with Mrs. Parker. But now my brother is dead, and no one seems to know what's happened to the baby. Marion. Bob was my best. Wanted me the baby's guardian, and I'll help the sheriff search until we find the youngster. Chances are that Bob Horner's killers are holding the child. Rex, get a posse together. We're combing the country for that baby. sheriff's office today. You heard right. Didn't I tell you to never come here in the daytime? Oh, you've got nothing to worry about now. We got Horner out of the way and you're sitting pretty. Sitting pretty, huh? Where's the baby? Why, did those three strangers bring the kid into town and report the killing? What do you mean, three strangers? The wagon with Horner's body showed up to Bar H. Nobody was with it. Say, there's something phony going on then. Yeah, after we plugged Horner, three hombres started shooting at us and we had to take out. Well, they must have the kid. Well, you birds sure put me in a tough spot. Until that kid's found, the court will hold up my trusteeship of the estate. Well, after all, we're no mind readers, Morley. Listen, we had a deal with you. We won't go into that. Find that baby, and you can fix it up somehow so those three strangers are blamed for the murder. See, that's an idea. We'll check with you later on. Warm yet? Just about. Let me have that bottle. You know, Dusty and I are going into town tonight, and we'd better hurry up and feed my little maverick. What do you mean, your little maverick? Didn't I find him? You mean I did. You know what? I'll bet he'd go for this. He sure would if you'd loan him your teeth. I remember when I was a kid, all I cowed just to hey, watch what you're doing. <laughs> you'd never make a mother. Make a baby. I bet I know what he is. He needs new dungarees. You think you can do it? I reckon I ought to be able to, seeing as how I'm an expert at throwing a diamond hitch on a pack mule. <laughs> Funny, ain't it? <laughs> There's 
the young fella saddled his pants a plenty. <laughs> Now look what you haven't done. You haven't had him quiet down, too. Sleep, my little maverick. Sleep, my little maverick. Hey, pipe down. Sounds almost as bad as Dusty singing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, we'll let the baby decide that. Come on, get out of there, Alibi. Weather eye open for trouble. We'll try to be back from Medicine Hat by midnight. What do you want? Oh, I want a little bit of information, Sheriff. I'm looking for a gent named Amos. You mean Amos Hardy? Yeah, that's him. He owns the gold mine saloon across the street. Say, have they found any trace of the fellows that killed Horner? No, we haven't. But when we do, they'll sure swing. Yeah, I reckon they will. Thanks, Sheriff.
find that baby, we're liable to lose the gravel contract. I can't sign the thing until the kid's officially my ward. Your proposal to supply a bar each the $50,000 covering the guarantee you requested has been deposited with the Medicine Hat Bank and will be turned over to you upon receipt of enclosed contracts duly signed. This acceptance expires July the 14th. There's no use worrying, Jim. If those three strangers still have the kid, they're no doubt trying to find out who he belongs to. Well, I hope you're right. Once we get our hands on that $50,000, we're leaving this bird for good. Here's what's it gonna be. Take mine of Kentucky bourbon. Mm -hmm. I'll have milk, and my partner will have milk, too. I get it. A little uh, rattlesnake milk, huh? My partner said milk. Milk? Mm-hmm. Milk. No luck, Morgan. You couldn't catch cold in the barrel of ice water, Kirk. Now beat it. I'll talk to you later. Didn't I tell you to beat it? Two of those strangers have got the kid around at the bar. Try and get them out of the saloon without any trouble, and we'll see what they're up to. We're looking for Amos Hardy. Is he around? Yeah. He's in his office.
Dusty, I guess they didn't follow us. No, I guess not. I reckon we'd better turn in for the night. Is the baby still asleep, Alibi? Yeah, you know how it might happen, him. That is, if he'd sleep all the time. <laughs> all joking aside, Trash, nobody wants a little rascal. Why don't we put our brand on it? Why, sure, why not? Well, it looks like several people want him pretty bad. We've got to see that he gets to the right one safely. Mm. Well, we might learn a thing or two at the bar age. It wasn't the whistling, it was the bonnet that did the trick. Well, you stay here, Elmer. What kind of a cow hand are you? Who, me? Uh, oh, what are you doing here? Oh, uh, well, I, I work on the bar age. Oh? Well, <laughs> well, you're the sheriff? You bet you're a big boots on, the Sheriff. Uh, well, uh, well I, I, I thought so. What are you doing in this get-up? Oh, this? <laughs> well, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm rehearsing. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going into vaudeville. Well, I'm not. I'm looking for some men with a baby. Have you seen any of them? No, sir. They're desperate characters, one of the law. Hey, that's a baby's bonnet. Oh, this? <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, why, uh, uh, this is my, belongs to my partner. Your partner? Yeah, yeah. Elmer. <laughs> uh, this here's my partner, Elmer Sneezeweed, Sheriff. This is the sheriff he's trying to track down some bad men. Bet he couldn't track an elephant in three feet of snow. Huh? He's a polite little fellow and funny. <laughs> Very funny. The maybe so, but he ain't funny to me. I can't understand what was this near in the hire a car hand. Yeah, hand. <laughs> Don't forget to come back from the get her act down good. Plum loco. So am I. Huh? Oh. Well, you saved my life that time, Elmer. Oh, gee, I'm a big boy now. Stop and take this hat off of me. Remember, Dusty, don't mention the baby and let me do the talking. Oh, you always want to do the talking. You're getting to be as bad as Elmer.
I'm going to take a look at that bushwhacker and find out what that shooting's about. All right, I'll circle around the hill. Lesson one. You said and done enough. I thought you were the gent that just took a pot shot at us. Didn't we, Dusty? Well, you told me to let you do all the talking, Greg. You're sure getting places. Did you say Dusty? Crash? Yes, ma'am. I know. I've heard those names before. You're the range busters. Well, only two of them, miss. Alibi's waiting for us back at Pete Jones' cabin. I'm Marion Horner. And I certainly want to apologize for my actions. Oh, that's all right. This ranch belonged to my brother. He was killed yesterday. We're very sorry, miss. But we're mighty interested in the case. I've heard so much about the things you've done. Suppose we go to the ranch house and talk there. Remember what she said? Strangers aren't welcome. Well, yes, the boys. Oh, 
But I've seen you before. Yeah, but I've got a job now. I'm the bar H. Let's see, well, I suppose it's your business, Marion. See you later. didn't stay very long, did he, ma'am? I usually have to almost run him off. We've been, what you might say, halfway engaged for some time. Well, I'm sure glad it's only halfway. Oh, you are, eh? Well, it's not going to do you a lot of good with me around. We'll check with you this evening, Marion. Yeah, he's here all right, Alibi. 
And that's what he's all right. I switched to Elmer for the baby and they took Elmer. What do you mean they? Them three gunfighters that killed Horner. Those three gunfighters? Yeah. The only ones that know we're staying at this cabin are Marion, the sheriff, and Moreland. And Moreland left the bar H before we did. Alibi, you take the baby to the bar H and don't talk. Dusty and I are riding to town. Let's travel. Max Moran. Turn around. Fifty thousand bucks, huh? Well, this is once you outsmarted yourself, Moran. We're heading for the sheriff's office. Let's go. Jim, just 
cut one of the range buses going through my face. I'd have had him if his pal hadn't butted in. Where'd he go? West toward the hill. Did they get anything of value? They got that letter from the state engineering department, Amos. If we don't get it back before the Horner girl sees it, we're sunk. Kurt laid a trap for them three troublemakers. And we're riding out to Mesquite County right now to spring it. Well, you gotta ride with you. Good. I took the kid to the Bar H Ranch, but the Horner girl's gone. Gone? Well, where'd she go? Keep quiet till I get through. Some of them told that we were in Mesquite Canyon with a baby and wanted her to come and get us. Let's go get her. Oh, now, wait a minute. Outside of Marion and the Sheriff, Moreland and his gang are the only ones that know our names. It's a trick. They're pulling this gun, figuring that we'll go after the girl and walk into a trap. Yeah, but we'll just give them a little surprise. I got a letter in my pocket that proves Moreland's back of this whole deal. We'll force a showdown by bringing all the interested parties together. But don't forget, we're the ones that are being hurt. That's what I'm counting on. Dusty, you ride back into town and let Mullen and his gang get a good look at you, and that'll start a chase. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. I'm serious. When they take after you, head for Mesquite Canyon. Me and Alibi will hunt up the sheriff and lead him and his posse in the same direction. It sounds worse than a six-day bicycle race to me. But if a horse is holding out, it ought to work. And we might find out. Well, so long. Good luck. That must be the cabin alibi. Do you reckon that sheriff and his posse are still fat on us? Well, if we can't follow the trail, we'll have to blind. Here comes Dusty. How are you doing, Dusty? I'm lucky to be doing it all. I've been dodging bullets for the past hour. You ain't the only one. How far back are you playing me? Well, they're too close for comfort, but we got a little time. Is that the cabin over there? Yeah, and there's a guard outside, and they might be holding Marion. They're holding Elmer, too. That's right. Oh, that would mean shooting, and Marion might get hurt. 
You circle around to the back of the cabin, and Dusty and I'll get the guard outside. Okay. I get that rope and tie them off. Get back over there. Sit down. Sit down, you'll live longer. It's the way to put these horses. We dismount and go on foot. Anyone. 
you know about this letter before? Not until Crash mentioned it a few moments ago. And my brother had given Marlon definite instructions not to renew the gravel contract. What have you got to say about this, Marlon? The whole thing's ridiculous. This guardian of Bob Horner's son, I have a perfect right to handle the estate the way I see fit. But you didn't have a perfect right to order Bob Horner killed. What do you mean? He means that we saw these three armories ambush Bob Horner and shoot him. That's how we come to have the baby. Well, if those three committed the murder, I didn't know anything about it. They worked for Amos. Sell us out, would you? Morton planned the whole deal. He wanted me to buy the bar ridge for him, so Horner wouldn't get suspicious. And what else? This didn't work. We planned on bumping Horner off. So he'd be the kid's guard here to get his hands on the gravel contract. All right. I've got some empty cells for you fellas. I'll tie those two. We're all heading for town. You bet I love this ranch. And everything on it. I sure hate to leave. Then why not stay? You know I need good cowhands. But Mary and gee, I, I got two fine pals, and I really got to go with them, but, but I'll be back. Um, I understand. You just can't leave your pals. Who was the lady I saw you with last night, Elmer? Oh, cut it out, alibi. I told you if you didn't get some new gigs, I was put in the act. Well, I did see you going down the street with your piccolo, Elmer. Well, that was no piccolo, that was my pipe. You know, Marion, I love this ranch and everything on it. I sure hate to leave it. I know, don't tell me. You've got two wonderful pals and you can't leave them. Goodbye, Miss Marion. I certainly enjoyed my stay here with you. Me too, but I got three pounds.